Hey everybody, how you doing? It's Joanne Rogers here, Design with Joe, and it's Tuesday evening, and that means it's Facebook Live night. I'm happy you're here with us. Hi Brenda, glad that you're here too. So um, tonight we're going to be making, as I said, a really quick um, gift card holder. One, if you've got a ton of gift card holders that you have purchased, then uh, these are the ones that you want to make because they're super quick. I have a couple other ideas too that I'm going to share through some videos over the next couple weeks, but this one you're really going to like. And it's been a, it's an oldie buddy goodie. It's been around for a long time, but I think you're going to enjoy it. So we have some choices. So as ever, you guys are going to be making some choices on uh, what I'm going to be crafting with. So we'll get to that in a minute. There's just a, a few housekeeping items. So first of all, um, we have some people to pick prizes for. So last time when we were here, uh, we got together and we made this card. So I'm going to turn it the wrong way. So this was the diagonal crossover card. And this video is posted on my Facebook on Design with Joe. And it's also on Design with Joe VI Peeps, which is my group. So if you didn't see this one, you are going to want to check it out because it is so versatile and makes a really lovely card. We made uh, this one and uh, I did one. It was funny because we made them almost exactly the same last time, but I put everybody's name who makes a comment. So if you make a comment, your name goes into the draw in the, the random Facebook picker. I use a, a little piece of an application to do it. And the winner of this is Janine Potter. So Janine, uh, you're here in Red Deer. So I will get that off to you. And then I also have uh, a little package of some items that we made at our Fall Frolic. So I'm going to send the PDF and these goodies to whoever shared. So um, um, well, a name, I'm going to pick somebody who shared. So out of everybody who shared, I put your name into my little tin here and I, um, I'm going to draw one out. So Karen, thanks for watching. So um, we have a few people on and I love when everybody makes comments so please comment back and forth comment to each other so I've got a name here and it is Sinzia I think is how you spell it how you say it Sinzia maybe Capella so Sinzia if you can message me and let me know where I can send that little bit of goodie then uh, that would be great and uh, for next time for next time, I've got a packet of two cards. So I've got two. This one is made with the Painted Harvest. So I've, I'm going to read this again, it looks like. Let me see if I, oh, upside down. Uh, this one is made with the Seasonal Wreaths Embossing Folder. And you can probably see there's quite a bit of shine on it. This is done with champagne um, paper. And then I've got, I don't know if you can see, there's actually rhinestones on there as well. And then this guy here is just some different colors. So uh, we had, this is a, a retired one, got some retired colors on there, but that's Lemon Lime Twist. How many people love Lemon Lime Twist and still have it in their, their stash? So again, if you share, please let me know that you share because I don't, if you have pri different privacy settings on your um, Facebook, then I may not know that you share. So just let me know in a comment and then we'll get your name in the draw for next time. Okay, I think that's that. Now I just want to give you a really quick sneak peek because uh, this past weekend we were up in Edmonton for a Stampin' Up! Uh, on stage, which is Stampin' Up!'s uh, convention. And I just want to show you this lovely catalog. So make sure I get it in the right area. So this is a very pretty catalog. And uh, though, yes, those are poppies on the front. And uh, it's it's got some beautiful things inside of it. And so we can't show you the, the catalog. Uh, this will be out. I'll be mailing and uh, delivering to my customers in uh, late December. So you'll get it probably when you have time to relax after Christmas. And you can sit down with a cup of tea or a glass of wine and you can... Uh, browse through and it goes live on Ju uh, January 3rd and then attached to that as well so you have a ton of lemon lime twist gee that's funny isn't it and this is the little celebration uh, flyer and so the celebration is for those who aren't familiar it is a great time in Stampin Up in the Stampin Up uh, calendar because for three months there are free items that you can get when you place an order of certain value and in Canada that's uh, the limit is $60 so I um, can't show you anything that's in there but know that there are some great things 
we were able to play with new things. I got some new things. I also have an order uh, on its way uh, with uh, some of my picks and I'm really, really trying to stick to a budget this time. So remember that I said that and you guys can call me out if you think maybe I wasn't necessarily sticking to my budget. So, okay, I think that's everything. Um, I'm going to uh, turn you down now and I'm. I, this is where you need to uh, get involved and tell me how I'm gonna create tonight. So hold on just a sec. Okay, so uh, this is actually from on stage. So we stamped on these. So these are laid out all on the table. So this one has a little bit of old olive on it, but I thought, you know what? I can still use that. Um, what I wanna do is you guys need to pick. So the second person, the second person to tell me which stamp set would you like me to use today? The birds of a feather, and I see I've got quite a glare on there, but birds of a feather or Elfie. So do we wanna go with uh, little elves? And um, there's some real cute ones there. Or do we want to go with our birds of a feather? And this, I got this set because it's pretty versatile. So it's got, you know, for Christmas, but it had for Halloween. There's Thanksgiving, which is being celebrated, uh, of course, in the States next Friday, next Thursday, rather. And then uh, our little guy here with the heart for Valentine's. So Pat says elves and Linda says elves. So we're going with Elfie. It looks like, oh, sorry, Leanne. You were just a second too short. So we're going to go with Elfie. So let me just put my bird ones away. Okay, so the ones we're going to be using, I, I sorry, I have already picked those. We're going to use the no peeking guy, which is ultra sweet. And we're going to go also for the little guy that's in the, uh, the stocking. So here we are. I'm going to pull those over. And we're going to go ahead and uh, first of all, we are going to stamp on one of those and I'm going to use Memento. So this little piece of paper here is just Whisper White and the Whisper White is, make me sure, it's three and a half by one and fifteen sixteenths and you'll see why it's one and fifteen sixteenths and not two in just a moment. So we're just going to ink up and we're going to stamp our little guy for no peeking there and on the other one uh, you know what? We're not going to stamp him quite yet. We're not going to stamp our words either. We are going to color this little guy first. So I'm going to pull in some Stampin' Blends. And uh, yeah, that chicken is awfully cute, isn't it, uh, Leanne? So I've got Shaded Spruce, I've got Cherry Cobbler, and I have Mango Melody. And we're just going to color him in. So when I'm working on a smaller space like this, I uh, tend to use, rather than using my brush tip, I'm going to use my um, my bullet tip and okay I guess I need a help a bit of help here I was just going to go ahead and color his hat green but do we want a green do we want a shaded spruce hat or do we want a cherry cobbler hat so uh, first person first person on that one is going to let me know I am going to wait just for a second and let's come up with um, a number there a number a color so fingers on your keyboards anybody and we're gonna take the first person, Cherry. Thank you, Linda. Okay, good thing I didn't start coloring. So when you're coloring with your blends, what I tend to do, and this is personal preference, other people are doing different things. You know what, this is not Cherry Cobbler. This is real red. Hold on just a minute, I got the wrong ones. Let me pull those ones in. And yes, I could tell just by looking at it. Okay, so when I start, we're gonna have a slightly different color here. I go in with my lighter one first, and you can always tell which one is the lighter one. So light cherry cobbler, and I color all over the place. And so I'm gonna go a little bit slower here because I wanna make sure that I don't go outside the lines. Um, now, some people don't only color up to the lines. I tend to go pretty close, like, leave himself a little bit of a border there I go pretty close and so I'm gonna give him he's gonna be a red elf we'll give him some green cuffs maybe um, so I go in and I color everything and then I go in with my darker and I just go usually into the areas that I think might be shadowed and which are usually the corners maybe around the top of the hat and I just give a tiny little bit and then I go back in with my lighter one. And the reason for me doing it that way is then I can blend it out so it doesn't even look like there's a line there. And you'll be able to see that and it'll dry. 
I guess I do need to do a little bit down here too for his um, coat. No, I'm not sure that I have actually done um, blends with Facebook Live before, have I? So you guys can tell me if this is excruciatingly painful watching me color, but it's just a little tiny guy, so it shouldn't be too bad. Okay, so there we go. I'm gonna put just a dot of dark on there on the tiny little bits. I really like shading. I love the blend. I love the dark to light look there. We're gonna give our guy some yellow hair. He's gonna be a Scandinavian. A Scandinavian elf. I suppose there's all kinds of different cultural elves in there. Okay, so yellow hair. And we're gonna leave everything else off for just a moment. Now you have another pick. So we have, I've just pick and picked three colors out of the uh, Christmas plaid paper, wrapped in plaid paper, which is, um, it is the uh, plaid on one side and this is cherry cobbler with shaded spruce. So we have to decide, are we gonna go for the plaid side? That's the first pick. So how about the first two people to, um, to decide on that. So hi Rhonda, glad you're here. So first two people, are we gonna go with plaid or are we gonna go with the patterned side, which has, I've picked two dots and then the one that has the little trees. Plaid, okay, thank you Pat. So we're going pa uh, plaid. Oh, now we're at a green, we have a white one in there too. So really, we have a green or a white one. I guess I didn't pick a red one, did I? All right, so which one in here do we wanna use? Um, Leanne? And, and Pat, you both said plaid, so which one do you want? Do you want the first green one on top, the white one, or the green on the bottom? I don't know what these plaids are called. Does anybody have an idea what they're called? Are they Glen check? Are they, I don't know, what are they? Green, okay, we're gonna go green. And green, we got a white, we got right green, that's this one. We're gonna go with this one. Sheesh, that was difficult, wasn't it? Okay, so he's gonna go on there like that and I'm just gonna glue him down with a piece of snail, some snail. And I don't know why he's the same way all the way around, but I have to have him facing up when I do this. Okay, so he's gonna go there. Now we're done with him for just a moment and we're gonna come back to him. So I'm gonna pull in my uh, trimmer right now. And on my trimmer, I uh, if anyone has the new one, have you been playing with it and do you like it? So this is just a Whisper White envelope. So how many people already know what we're doing because you've seen this before? So our Whisper White envelope, we are going to score. I'm going to have it facing me and I'm going to move it to two and seven eighths. I'm going to score it at two and seven eighths, which is over here. So it is the two ticks back from three, shall we say. So I'm gonna score it there, make sure you have the scoring and not the cutting blade. So what I like about this trimmer is that it gives you a pretty deep impression. Now probably I should have scored it on the outside because normally I would fold away from my score line, but I'm gonna fold into, for this project, I'm gonna fold into the new one. Yeah, I love it too, Kathy. I'm, I'm enjoying it more and more as I use it a little bit more. So um, it is really a great trimmer. So if you're in the market for a new trimmer, it is a great one to have. So now I'm going to just take my scissors, which are over here, and I'm going to cut from here to the score line, the flat fold line, I guess I'm going to call that. And you're going to go right on that line. Okay, this is probably the easiest part. You are going to moisten this and then you're just going to stick it down. So I'll do that off screen. Yuck, there you go. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we are going to stamp on this side here. We're gonna stamp our little, um, here's my memento. We're gonna stamp our fellow with the stocking right over top. And then I've got some words here and I have already picked that we're going to be using shaded spruce and I'm going to do just for you on this side and I'm going to try and get it straight, although it might not happen. Yeah, not bad. And I'm going to do the words and a trick for doing the words on this one is Take your envelope and lay it out flat so you just have your flap facing you and then ink up your words and then try and get those straight as well. So I'm going to line up my flap with my grid line here. 
so that I know at least that my envelope is straight. And then I'm going to try and line up my, oh, I don't know if this is going to work. I'm going to line up my words. Let's see if we get them fairly straight. Let's see. Oh, not bad. I'm actually, I shouldn't talk too soon, but I'm sort of batting 100 today. Okay, so that's what we have so far. Now what I'm going to do, now I shouldn't have glued that down because now I'm going to color with my blends a little bit again. And I'm going, because we had a red guy out front, I'm going to do mainly a green stocking. And what have I got here? I've got the dark. I want the light. I'm going to go for the light. Now, what I would should have done is I should have put in a piece of cardstock underneath this flap so that my, um, my, my alcohol marker, my Stampin' Blend, won't bleed through. So I'm going to just take a peek and see if I can see this through. Normally it wouldn't bother me. No, I think we're going to be okay. Um, but if this piece is not quite big enough, I think it is, if it's not quite big enough, then we would see it through. But I think we're going to be okay. I think we're going to be fine. How many people use the blends and love them? And how many people want some blends and think that that might be a really good gift to get for Christmas? So again, I just do little bits of shading. I don't color the whole thing, just a little bit on the edges. So this is what it looks like if you do the dark first. I would just want to show you. And we'll probably do the tip here. So when you do the dark first, one of the things, you maybe don't have to do quite as much coloring. So I'm going over a couple times with mine. So uh, Linda, do you have all of them uh, like me? I was sort of uh, disappointed that we didn't have any in the holiday catalog, any more colors that came out in the holiday catalog. I really do use mine a lot, and I'm already on the second set of some of my more popular colors, like Cherry Cobbler and Night of Navy. The ones that came out first, and Old Olive, those ones I use a lot. Okay, so what you might be able to tell, I don't know if you can or not, is that uh, this one here is a little bit lighter because I haven't gone over it a second time. So I'm actually getting three variations of shade. I'm getting light, I'm getting really dark, and then I'm getting a little bit lighter. So I'm happy with that. And I think he's going to have a red hat, though. So I'm going to go for red again on the hat. So yeah, when I'm coloring, you guys have to just sit and watch and um, see if you can color along. So it's snowing here today. Is it snowing wherever anybody else is? It's, uh, it's not a real heavy snow and it's not supposed to stay much longer. Um, and we've had really a strange start to our winter. Normally we would have a full slate of snow on the ground by now and we don't. So how many people are watching from an area that has snow? Anybody? I know that there's several of you because I know that you're in Red Deer. Okay, I think I'm just going, oh, he needs to have Nordic hair too. Just because I don't have a brown one right here, so he's getting yellow hair, flaxen hair. And I'm not going to give them, I'm gonna give that toe or that heel a little bit of yellow too. Okay, so that's enough coloring for him. So let's just put this on the front. Now, before I put this on the front, I want some ribbon. And so I pulled in a couple different kinds of ribbon. And you know what? I just realized I forgot to do something. Let me see if I can get this off of here. It's snail, so I should be able to. You know what? I'm going to show you a tip. Some of you probably already know this, but this is where your floss will come in handy. And if you don't tend to floss your teeth every day, then bring it downstairs into your craft room. So I take my piece of floss and I've created a little bit of an opening here. And I am going to take my floss directly underneath. Now this works on things like your snail and I'm, um, I'm pulling it down. So I'm holding it up here. My snail and my floss actually is down here right now. And it goes all the way around and comes out the other side. And I've released some of that snail so I should be able to get it off. And I can. Okay, so what I forgot was that I want to put a tag topper on the top of this. So he's going to go in here like this. And that's why I made it 1 and um, 15 sixteenths instead of 2 inches. And so I just center that over top and I punch it out. Now it's probably glued. No, I'm doing okay. 
Okay, so there he is. So I like that a little bit better. And I'm going to just place him down. I don't want him glued really heavy because I had planned, I'm not going to let you pick this color, but I will let you pick, be thinking, what do you think you want for going around the cards? Considering we're using this paper, do you want shaded spruce ribbon or do you want cherry cobbler? Which one do you think? So I'm just going to thread this one through and I'm just going to knot it like you would normally. So who's got an idea on if we're doing green? Let's have somebody different. Maybe somebody who hasn't uh, voted it and anything, or maybe had not won so far tonight with everybody, didn't, just didn't get their fingers in there fast enough. There we go, try that. Okay, just a, a little bit. And now I am gonna give myself just a tiny bit more snails because I took a fair bit of that adhesive off of there. And I have floss. You know, you could probably put that in the bathroom and still use it. Ew, I don't think so. There we go. Okay, and now I'm going to glue this guy down. So I'm just using my snail. You could use liquid glue and you could use tear and tape. So, uh, we had, oh my goodness, you guys all want cherry cobbler. Okay, so I didn't even have to say one person or the second person. Janine, Rhonda, Linda, Pat, you guys are all into cherry cobbler. So the, the size, the length that you need of this is about 12 inches. And I should have done that before I um, brought up my, should have brought my ruler and I don't have it. So let's just hope that I have the right amount here. I've got to put my tops on my blends. That's one thing you do want to do. You don't want them to be um, coming undone, coming undone, drying out. What? My words are not following what's in my head today. So then what you do, I've got a strip of snail. Again, you could put some um, tear and tape on there if you like. And then I have it so that I have a little bit more on this side. So on the left hand side than on the right hand side. And I'm going to place this out here right over top of that snail. It just pretty much in the middle. I'm not going to put anything on the back because I want that just to hang out freely. I'm going to put that there and now I'm just going to place this guy over top, centering him on here. Okay, and then you're just going to, now before I do that, I should, uh, I should have a gift card here, shouldn't I? Well, I will open up the other ones. Your gift card is just going to go right in here. So in that pocket is your gift card and it will just peek out the top, hopefully. But when they open it up, they're going to get this. I think I need to just trim this off a little bit. Okay. And then you're there, you're, once you have your gift card in there, then you're just going to turn this into a bow. So I should have given you enough to make a bow. If you are really bow challenged and that's scary for you, just make a shorter piece and only do a knot. So one thing that I do is if I want my tails to go this way, I usually make my bow a bit backwards. So by that, I mean, normally I would go like this, right? And have, bring it towards me. I'm going to have it go away from me and through, and then my tails should come out towards the front. See how it's facing in this way? So if you did it the other way, your bow would be here and your tails would be out there. So there's your, there's your card. I'm probably gonna trim this off, but I wanna bring in the one that I made because they do look quite different. And I wanna show you where that um, gift card goes. I think I am gonna trim this off right now. So let me go in here. It's easy to do on the diagonal here because we have diagonal stripes on it. I'm going to go on this side. I don't have my ribbon scissors. They're across the room, so we're going to do that. So there's him. There's him. There's the guy. There's our, our cute little guy. And then when you open it up, so this is the one I did with birds of a feather. And then wishing you a joyful Christmas. And then your gift card goes in here. Okay, so that's sort of cute, isn't it? And it's, you can throw this in the mail, just put it into a, a maybe a note card envelope or, or just a regular envelope would work too. So there's one more thing that I want to do to this guy. Let me undo it here. Is I want to put some puff paint on his hat. So let me grab some puff paint and I'm going to put the puff paint on the dot, on the pom-pom and along the top, just like on Santa's. And this stuff is really wet. So when you put it on, what I found to be easiest is just to dab it on. Don't 
and I'm not even pressing the bottle really just a very very little bit now I'm going to come in with my um, heat tool and uh, I might have to talk louder here but I'm going to come in with my heat tool and you have to heat this up quite a bit now I should have done this before I put it on so I'm hoping that you're going to be able to see it puff up but you want to do it longer than you think you might need to so I'm just going to I gotta watch my fingers in there and when you see it puff up just move on there, it's just starting now okay so when it's just starting keep going and make it puff up quite a bit there can you see it happening there now and you can always do more than one coat on top of there too now if you were really quick and you had your dazzling diamonds right there while it's still hot dap, dip that into your dazzling diamonds and you've got sparkle too Okay, so I always like to know which one is your favorite. I'm not going to try and do those bows um, right now. So which one do you like better? Do you like the one we made tonight with the uh, little elf? Or do you like the one with birds of the feather? So this one is a little bit more bold perhaps, but um, it's cool. It's cute with this plaid. So uh, thanks, uh, Pat, and it is a really cute idea, and everybody has envelopes. This will work mostly with, uh, with envelopes, so the ones from Stampin' Up! are great. Sometimes when you, let me just open it, sometimes if you have envelopes that have come down to a point, if they're not Stampin' Up! ones, it isn't quite as cute, I don't think, but um, these ones work really well because they're that flat bottom. So we're getting, uh, we have one chick, we have two elves, um, oh, the both, but I think maybe the elf might win. And I think he is just such a sweet little elf. Okay, so thank you very much, everybody, for watching. We're actually quick tonight. It's not quite 7 o'clock. So I'm really glad that you joined in. Next week, I'm going to be doing Facebook Live. So I'm going to be away at the end of the month. So I'm going to have a back-to-back -back Facebook Live, not two weeks apart. So you're going to want to uh, come next week and see what I'm crafting. I And I think I have an idea already, but I'm not going to share it. It's going to be a surprise. So again, have a great evening. We'll see you guys next time uh, with Design with Joe.